Welcome everybody. Thank you for coming today. I'd like to introduce John Tom, who's a research staff m member at the Almaden Research Center of IBM Research. And John's interests focus on understanding the needs of users and designing new technologies to support collaborative applications. He applies a mix of qualitative research, so um, interviews, surveys, video-based um, observation, and quantitative using user logs to understand people's current work practices and design new prototypes and tools to support their work. So um, John's previous research experience has been at Xerox Park and at some microsystems. And um, just for all the uh, employees here today, just let you know that this uh, presentation is being recorded for YouTube. So um, thank you, John. OK, thanks. It's, I'm glad to be here to have a chance to talk about Bluemail with uh, folks here at Google. So we're going to talk about how we can improve the email experience. And I'm focusing on two, I think, fairly obvious areas, dealing with the volume of email and finding messages that you've received in the past when you need it. Um, and I'm going to talk about how Bluemail tries to address that in two ways. First, we're trying some new things with the design of email by a combination of conversation threading, folders, message tagging, and orienteering. And also, we're using Bluemail to help us understand, well, how are people using email currently? And what about that usage is changing in ways that we need to adjust in our email client design? So, um, I'll just start with a quick overview. This is what Bluemail looks like. Um, it's a web-based access to e email. In, the, in our case, Lotus Notes uh, Enterprise Email. And I'll just highlight a few things first, and we'll go into more detail. Uh, we do message threading, so collecting all messages together into a thread so that each uh, thread is one line. We also do conventional folders. So you can file messages away in folders as people are familiar with from prior email clients. And we do message tagging. So you can tag messages, and that shows up in a tag cloud here on the left bottom, and also in the thread itself, any tags that you apply to messages or threads appear there. And we'll go through that in more detail uh, in a demo. But first, I want to kind of set up the, even that combination of features creates some interesting, uh, at least uh, surprising to us, design interactions. And I'm going to show an example uh, that explains that. So let's say I get an email message in my inbox, and it's about blue mail design. So I reply to it, which automatically puts a message, my reply, in the sent folder. And I'm one of those people that likes to file things into folders. So I'm going to file it in a folder called blue mail. And since it's about design, I'm also going to apply a tag called design to that. OK? So then let's say someone replies to my response, and that comes into my inbox. Uh, and then I also get a message inviting me to give a Blue Mail talk at Kai, which was just last month. So this last message, I'm going to tag. It's about uh, design, but it's also about Kai. So I'm going to apply two different tags to that message. So even in this simple example, we've got, and the features that we have, there's a couple different ways to kind of organize my conceptual model of email. So there's conventional folders, and you can see where those messages lie in, in folders. And then there's threading, and the threading cuts across folders, right? So some messages are in a place I've already foldered away. Some are in the inbox. Some are in my sent. And there's tags. Uh, so those tags connect messages, again, that could be in different folders. And those tags also potentially connect with other tags. And so that creates some interesting design interactions. I'm going to step through um, how we address those in Bluemail. So I'm going to try to do a live demo. Uh, guys, just uh, bear with me while I switch over to that. Huh. was working just a little bit ago. Bluemail is not, it's a prototype, I should say, it's a proof of concept prototype, and it's not um, performance tuned. So this may take a little while. But there you go. OK. So let me expand that to full screen. So this is what Bluemail looks like. Huh. Um, you'll see a list of messages here. And again, you see how. Uh, messages are gathered into threads. So here's a thread of five messages. Here's a thread that I had with Jennifer organizing uh, my meeting here. I think my computer's finally catching up. And you'll also see 
that uh, as part of the subject line, there's a little digest of what the first few characters or as much as will fit of the message itself. So I can tell this message says it's done. I don't actually really need to read that any further. So uh, the messages that are not read yet by me are in bold. Uh, messages I've seen already are not are in regular text. And we'll just open this one, which is a um, message about a Beikai meeting tonight. And oh, I'm sorry, this is this slow. It's usually not this slow, but we are kind of working through a couple layers of networking. Uh, and the, the message will open up in a preview pane down below. So uh, it, in contrast to Gmail, we're actually trying to keep everything within the same view of the page. Hmm. There we go. So I think this is mainly network slowness. Um, but as you see, the preview is going to show up in the bottom, and, and I can read the message in context with the message list. So just to point out some other things about threads, we actually have the most recent message of a thread at the leftmost in this, in this front position. And we preserve the order of threads. So I can see that this uh, message started from a call. I gave a response. McCall responded. I responded. McCall. So we, we preserve that order up in the message list itself. And I can kind of see what's new or how many messages are new, uh, like you can see in some of the lower messages. Um, OK, so that message finally appeared. I can scroll and read through that if you want. Um, and I'm going to try uh, to open a thread. I see. So Firefox is hung up on something. OK, I'm going to try to go through as much of the demo as we can, but I might revert. Here we go. So this opens up the thread. And again, you'll see uh, a message at the top will open up in full view. And then all the messages below that are collapsed into a header. You just see the digest of the first line of the message. Uh, and again, it's in reverse chronological order. So the most recent message is up at the top. And earlier messages in the thread are down below. Now, if I choose to delete a thread, um, well, I'll just talk through this because I don't want to confuse the, the client while it's doing that. But if I delete a thread, it'll pop up a warning message because any actions, deleting or foldering, acts on the entire thread, not on an individual message. So it'll warn me if I'm deleting a thread that uh, I'm not deleting just one message, but perhaps a whole series of five messages and confirm that that's what I want to do. Um, and it'll also allow me to drag and drop a message to a folder to file it or, or to a tag. So let me try to show, right, so there's this pop-up. I'm about to delete five messages in thread. I'm actually going to cancel that because I don't want to do that. So I want to show moving a, a collection of messages to a folder. Um, and let's say I'm in my sort of spring cleaning mode where I want to go through and get a bunch of messages and put them into a folder related to some work that I do at Stanford. And let's say I see. There, well, I know that there's a bunch of messages about the PCD, the People Computing and Design Seminar at Stanford, and I want to collect them all up and put them into a folder. And I know I, I haven't done the spring cleaning for a while since about January, so I want to go back to kind of the last period, the last time I've done this and find a message. So here's an example of one. I'm going to select this one. And I know I haven't done this since January, so I'm going to zoom down. And as I scroll, I hope, ooh, I get a, a preview. See that preview popping up about where I am in, the, in my message store. So let's say I'm going back to about January. I can get there quickly uh, without having to actually kind of page scroll. Let's see, I didn't quite go back far enough. Um, and I can also preview. Right, so here's another example of one. I can select that. and. Uh, Here's another example of one. I can select that. And then uh, I'm going to, as soon as it catches up with me, drag and drop that into a folder. There we go. So if I drag and drop and into this Stanford folder, it should take those three messages and put them into that folder. Um, furthermore, I'm going to go back up to the top. Uh, this message here, this thread, 
if I hover over the thread, I see the individual messages. And I want to show that in this case, um, I've already folded some of these messages into a different folder, as the example earlier. So, and those are shown with kind of a gray background. So messages, sorry, messages for me obviously are in the sent folder. This one I had filed uh, in the CSCW folder. And so it tells me which threads are in my current uh, view, my inbox, and which I've already put out in another view, but the thread still collects them together. It still provides you the context of the entire conversation, even if you've put some things away into another folder. Um, and so it allows you to uh, get quick access to the context to be able to respond to that thread. Um, OK. And I'm going to just show one other thing is tagging. So well, maybe I'm not going to show you tagging. Uh, tagging is another way of indexing through your email. Uh, it has some different affordances to foldering uh, in that you can tag, you can apply more than one tag to a message. Uh, and let's say I happen to know, again, because I'm doing the spring cleaning, there's a bunch of messages around Kai that I, I kind of didn't index. So I'm going to go to around when Kai was, which was early in April, and see, oh, here's one. Uh, and let's see if I can get it. So to apply a tag, I just click in the box and I add a, a tag, and that gets applied and it shows up in front of the, out of the message. And yeah, let's see if I can quickly navigate. There's, if I remember, there's a few Kai messages. Okay, so here's one, uh, here's another one, and here's another one. So I can do a global tag operation by just clicking, multiple selecting and dragging and dropping onto the tag cloud on the left here, the Kai tag in that cloud. And it will apply the Kai tag to all of those messages. Um, and furthermore, if I apply a, a, a tag to one message, because of threading, threading kind of leverages that. It, it'll surface that tag up to the top of the thread. And it, it'll be kind of guilt by association. That tag will be associated with other messages in the thread. Um, and of course, there's also a search box. Um, let's see, if I search for gender, I'll, I'll get any messages that were uh, associated with her. OK. Uh, sorry that got a little bit slow, but any questions about Blue Mail and operations about how it features and how tagging and foldering and uh, threading interact? Tags are applied to messages. Tags are applied to messages, but they, are, they get associated by threading uh, because threads work across foldering. They, they'll, they'll show up in, in any view that you have of a thread. Oh, and I should mention, um, there's an, a non-threaded view. I'm sorry, the question was tags uh, associated with threads. Actually, tags are associated with individual messages, and they, they by association, go to threads. There is a non-threaded view. So by clicking on this icon at the top, I get what you might think of as a kind of a conventional view of email one message at a time. So I can toggle between unthreaded or threaded view. Yeah, I don't know why it changed my view. Uh, but see, so there's all the threads together. And then if I click on this again, it will eventually go into unthreaded view. You said certain messages can be in different folders, right? And if you're in a threaded view, can you be in parts of those folders and only see parts of that thread? Or if you're in threaded view, you always see the messages in, a, in, a entire, in its entirety? Right, OK, so the question is about how threading and foldering interact. And threading, we are in real time um, figuring out threads. And threads will, all, threads will always be kept together in threaded view, even when it's spread across folders. So uh, any, anywhere where I look, in, no matter what folder I'm in, if I'm in threaded view, it will sort of collect other messages that are part of the thread and re reconstitute it in that thread. But it will show in the hover which ones, which messages are in my current folder or view, and which ones are from another folder. Uh, hold on just a second. Let me kind of reorient where I am, because I seem to have gone into unthreaded view. Uh, there was another question? Yes. I just wanted to clarify if you can have a message in multiple folders. And if that's, I don't know if you've tested against that. I don't know if your users thought that would be so confusing. OK, um, so the question is about, can a message exist in multiple folders? So I, I meant to say that. The messages only belong in one folder as conventionally. Messages can have more than one tag. Right. And so tags can bridge across folders. So how did you tackle the issue if you already 
sort of, um, I don't know, if you put a message into a folder, like you're sort of finished with it, but then someone replies to it, does it go back in the inbox or does it stay in that folder? How did you address that? Right, okay. So this, this is kind of tricky in the sense that it shows up in your inbox. So in this case, uh, this, this thread ca has five messages. And any message that has a gray background actually is living in another folder. So obviously the messages for me are in the sent folder. And these other two from a call, I happen to know, are in a CSCW folder. So, and this message at the top was a new incoming message, let's say, in my inbox. And so by coming in, it, it recollects the messages that I've, it makes it easy for me to get to the other messages in the thread, even though they're living in another folder. So it, it is creating a, a kind of a new view from the user's point of view. And we'll talk a little bit about some of the design tensions around that. Because some people use folders to move things out of view and you have your to-do list. Um, what we're doing here is that we're not taking up any more space. It's only one line in your message list. But it is making access to those other messages in the thread just one click away. Uh, other questions? Yes. So uh, to follow up on that uh, foldering thing, for instance, if you set up filters and you want to just shunt things off to a folder exactly as you said as a to-do and see unread messages only in the folder mm. context and clean them out of your inbox, is that a doable thing? OK, the question was about how uh, threading possibly interacts with filters. And um, so I think the, the user has a couple choices there. So first of all, if you go into unthreaded view, then you're back into this world where you only see what's in your folder. Um, so that's one way in which you can get uh, a view that I think what some people might expect that view, where messages that get uh, sent by a rule into another folder just won't appear in their inbox anymore. Um, but if you are in threaded view um, and you have a message in your inbox, if it's a reply, if it's a thread with messages that have been foldered elsewhere by rule or any other means, it'll show up in the thread. Um, so I'm a little unclear, though, about whether if you have a rule, how one message would get in your inbox and the others wouldn't. But if that did occur, the thread will always give you access to the entire thread, no matter what folder they're in. But, so this is, in fact, what we thought could be confusing. And one of the reasons why we wanted to try this, and we did some, I'll, I'll say a little bit about, we did some interviews with some users and got some reactions to it. But, but this is definitely the tricky part. Uh, and perhaps why, I don't know, Gmail doesn't offer folders at all, right? Because it avoids a whole realm of design issues if you, but by having both folders and tagging and threading, it, it creates some design tensions. Other questions? OK, so uh, I think that's it for the demo. I'm glad it survived as well as it did. Sorry that it was a little slow. Um, OK, so some contrast, contrasting blue mail with Gmail. So as I just mentioned, we're offering foldering and threading and tagging, the combination of those features together. Uh, the other thing is that we wanted to really try to support orienteering as well as searching. So that ability to kind of scroll and quickly find a place. Because people often uh, think of email in terms of, oh, I got that about a month ago, or around Kai, or certain landmarks. So to be, be able to quickly find those dates through scrolling. Um, and the other way we're supporting orienteering is you know, using leveraging threads to be able to take advantage of, well, a thread will always keep the context of the conversation of messages together or one click away. Uh, but we're trying to do that without cluttering up your view, without taking up more space. Um, there are a couple other interface design details. I pointed out that um, the ordering of entries, most recent is leftmost and topmost in the thread, which is, I think, converse to the way Gmail works. Um, and we also um, preserve the ordering. Uh, we don't, we don't uh, compress that down to just who was part of the thread. Uh, and we have that unthreaded option to be able to see messages in the conventional one by one view. And another uh, difference is that Gmail interfaces with Lotus Notes, which is uh, a different back end, but more importantly, aimed at the enterprise market. So to the extent that there might be differences between consumer and enterprise, um, blue mail is targeted towards an enterprise email context. So uh, because of the questions that we had, and we were wondering how are people going to react to threading uh, and foldering, we early on, before we had 
completely implemented Blue Mail. We did a limited field test of a small set of people um, among diverse job roles and even different sites where we had them load their own email into Blue Mail, which is important because we want to see how they triage their own email. Um, we gave them a demo of Blue Mail and particularly how threading and foldering interact. Um, and then we asked users to triage their own email for about one and a half hours. And we interacted with them in terms of what they were doing or what they expected to happen and, and how the design, how they were reacting to that design. And we probed for their reactions. And I just want to summarize a few responses to that. But I want to point out one interesting thing we did with this test is that uh, the people doing the interviews come. Uh, were included people using in different roles of our team. So there's myself as a user study researcher. There was the designer who uh, did most of the UI and visual design for Blue Mail. And there was an implementer who was actually located in Argentina because of the way our team was located. So we, we integrated different perspectives on the study. And this is something I think many companies separate researchers from designers from implementers. But we wanted to get multiple perspectives on our user study. Um, and it came back with people came away with different kind of impressions. I was looking for conceptual models, how people were thinking about foldering and threading. The designer came away with um, some clear ideas about how he wanted to communicate what was happening with, for example, uh, foldering and threading more clearly. And the implementer realized, you know, had had a personal experience of setting imp implementation priorities. And so it uh, gave us different perspectives. That it, and because our team is distributed among different locations, it, I think it also helped integrate the project team more. But so let's talk about the interactions between threading and folderings. Um, so as we said, we wanted to show in a thread that contains messages previously filed in a folder. Uh, we wanted to keep that together in a thread. Uh, and yet, in our interviews, many people say, well, I you know, wanted to get them out of my view. And so we did. This sort of explains some of our design rationale. That's why we tried to distinguish in the thread which messages had really already been folded somewhere else through the pop-up. Um, we could do more in this regard, actually. But uh, we're trying to distinguish messages that belong in some other folder but are being brought together in your threaded view. Um, we also asked the question, well, when you're acting on things in the, mo in the message list, are you acting on the entire thread or on the most recent message? And most people said that they wanted it to be on the entire thread. For deleting and foldering, especially if you're doing kind of spring cleaning, this makes it very quick. Uh, and so we do that, although we warn of the scope of the operation, that little pop up in orange. And you can click a box that says, you know, you don't want to see that again once you get used to that model. Uh, and then tagging and foldering. So, uh, we were very curious, how would people think about tagging and foldering? And there were a couple of choices we could imagine. Tagging could, over time, replace foldering once they got used to it as a different model. Or tagging could complement foldering. And, and in the interviews, people would say things like, you know, I would uh, use folders as nouns, but the tags would be adjectives. They'd kind of be subdivisions within a folder, but they want to keep the folder together, in part because many email clients, you know, their search is scoped by folder, not, not recent ones. But uh, as a habit, it was easier to keep things in a large folder, but ha add kind of gradations through tagging. Um, other people said that they would use tags to connect messages across folders. So if you had folders according to projects, but you had tags for like summer interns or reports or patents or other kind of cross-project things, that would be another kind of independent indexing mechanism across folders. And some people just said they wouldn't use either. They would only use search to find things, or they would use uh, unread marks or flags, other kind of subtle mechanisms to find messages. So um, frankly, we've got a very mixed picture about what users wanted or expected in terms of tagging and foldering. So uh, our, our approach so far is to support both, to allow both foldering and tagging to present clear models about how they uh, affect messages. But we're wanting to observe how they interact with tagging and foldering over time. And I'll say a little bit more about how much how far we've gotten there. Uh, actually, so. Uh, that's sort of describing Blue Mail so far. Any questions about the design rationale or how Blue Mail works before I go on to? Uh, yes. On the threads, if, say, by the time you start reading the thread, there's 30 entries mm -hmm. in it. Um, one, is it easy to tell which parts you've read and which you haven't? I wasn't quite clear about yeah. um, And then also, is since you're kind of top posting, is there a way to 
immediately get the context from the, from the bottom up? <laughs> OK, so the question was, how are threads, if you get lot, many threads, how can you tell which messages are unread in part of that thread? OK, so the, here's an example. This is a little, I, I, I made this artificial. I did read this message from you. <laughs> but uh, this message says that this, there's one message in bold from Jennifer that I haven't read in this thread. And so we are within a thread. And this is another example. Uh, again, this is artificial. But to make the point, this first message from Melissa is in bold. And that says, I haven't read it, but I'm, I'm looking at the other ones. Now, in terms of uh, if I look at the most recent message, so uh, here, here's an example. So this is. Uh, well, let me see if I can get this quickly. Um, when you look at the message, you see the show quoted text. We're basically collapsing embedded replies that are included in the message, assuming that you've already seen that. But if you're in a situation where you've accumulated a lot of unread messages, if you expand that, that can be an easy way to get at the earlier messages. Another question? Yes. Uh, um, we haven't, Blue Mail hasn't yet explored that. Right now we're just doing, um, there's, a, there's a cache of names. There's a, uh, it's a corporate address book that auto completes, but we're not doing uh, a personal address book yet. I see a little Sorry. bio and a picture of yourself. Yes. Is that, is that part of yeah. uh, Good question. OK, so the question was this little tile of an icon and other attributes. We are integrating with the corporate directory and a corporate um, uh, a way that you can tag people. So these actually are tags that are applied to the person that's in the tag. And, so, and, and I want to be clear about that. There's tagging of people, and there's tagging of messages in Blue Mail. And um, I'll say they're in the process of being integrated in terms of how we present that into the user interface. But we, uh, if I look at a tile, I can get their business card. Um, this happens to be me, and, and more information about them, and click at a click away, uh, and their tiles, their their tags, and other information. So that's integration with the corporate uh, directory. Yes. In the user test, um, were there any uh, spam folders coming in from uh, from the user's own mail, or was that just not part of the? Uh, sp uh, we're not in Blue Mail. The question was about spam. In Blue Mail, we're not doing anything additional about spam. So spam is being ha ha uh, taken care of at the corporate level. Um, and we're not seeing, which um, automatically gets rid of a lot of spam and will mark any suspect uh, messages that are kind of up to the user to decide. But we're not doing anything additional in Blue Mail itself. Uh, no, this I, I've read this message. Uh, so this message is actually my reply to Jennifer. And if I scroll down further, uh, okay, messages to outside addresses, not IBM, don't have the collapsing that we usually do. But these are down lower are the other messages in the threads. Um, so since I've read this one already, it's collapsed. But this one uh, was. Uh, was contrived to be not read, so it is actually open down there. OK, so let's go back to how we've been using Blue Mail to study corporate email practice. So Blue Mail is instrumented to log its own usage. Uh, it captures uh, general how are people using email, as well as features that are specific to Blue Mail. And at this time, we've deployed it around uh, three plus months. Um, we have, I think, a diversity of users. Uh, f for as research prototypes go. Uh, so over 7,000 users, around 62 countries. Here's a geographic visualization, obviously mostly from US, but there's a big contention in India. There's a story behind that. Some in Europe, some in South America as well. So it's, it's a broad range. So here actually is a summary table of research that's been done on email studies. Um, starting from about 20 years ago, uh, the number of people involved in the study, the number of average folders each user has, the number of average messages in their inbox, the total number of messages in their email store, the percentage of their email that's in their inbox, and the percent that's unread. And this is just a summary of uh, uh, research studies on email that have been taken over the past 
uh, 20 years. And we're just going to add our line here, which has an order of magnitude larger number of people involved in the study, and I would say more diverse. A lot of these previous studies have focused on research populations uh, and US, whereas our data include uh, uh, a range of job roles within IBM and companies around the world, countries around the world. So if you look at this, um, there's actually not very many obvious trends, as if email is going one way in the direction or the other. I think this reflects that email is very diverse in its use, and it's sensitive to work culture. I mean, some cultures use email in a certain way, and so the stat statistics of usage will show up. Um, but I'll just draw a couple to your attention. First of all, the number of messages in your inbox or in your total email store, it kind of Going up, our data is actually on the low end. Um, and one of the reasons why I think that may be is that IBM actually has a fairly aggressive email retention policy about messages expiring and how much email quota you can have. And frankly, more and more companies are instituting that, such policies. Um, and so I think that could account for the difference in particular between this study, which was done at Microsoft, and the study that we've been doing at IBM. And one of our points is that Although you may think email is kind of a pervasive, old school kind of topic, the usage of email is emerging and evolving over time, and, and things are changing. And so it's important to continue to collect data and see how, that, uh, how the usage changes over time. So you know, no clear pattern. It's not as if email is growing or shrinking in terms of what's in their store. Um, and there could be some factors, some policy factors, why that's getting lower. Um, the other thing is the number of folders. So again, it's not as if folders are going away, even though we have uh, search technologies have emerged for finding messages without necessarily foldering them into into categories. And so um, our data suggests that folders are are you know it the. the the average has kind of gone up and down over time, um, and it's not clear that it is going away even in the face of search technologies. OK, now being, oh, Robin, question. Right, okay, so first of all, let me explain. Um, Blue Mail uses the very same email store as our conventional client. So this is not messages they've only received in Blue Mail. This is their, and in fact, very few people use Blue Mail exclusively. They can interchange between Blue Mail and Notes, and their message is totally synced. So, uh, so the question was, why do we have so few? And it's not because it's only a small amount. It is their entire email store. I think it is more because of email retention policies within IBM. But again, I think that's becoming more common in the enterprise setting. Uh, so I think a trend to pay attention to in terms of how do we deal with, how do we design email clients to respond to that? OK, so being at Google, I, I expect you guys to sneeze at 7,000 users. I'm sure you guys are collecting you know, much larger numbers of data. Uh, I'd love to hear more about that or maybe compare some of those data. But um, th I am trying to put it in perspective with other published studies on email research. OK, so here's one thing we looked at. Uh, we, you know, you've probably heard of uh, frequent filers or spring cleaners or the no filer designations within email. And we didn't have a way of, of categorizing users, but we wanted to get some sense of how much people are still using folders. Okay? And so we collected statistics about percent of their received mail that is in a folder. So it's received mail, not the message that I send out. Uh, it's, it's messages that are in your store, not messages you've deleted. Uh, so what percent of them are in a folder versus in your inbox? Uh, and we created a histogram uh, in terms of number of users versus 0 to 5% in, in, uh, over on this left side of messages foldered versus almost all of them. There's a question, Robin. Ah. Right, okay, so the question was about whether there is a notion of an archive. There is a notion of an archive that's outside of Blue Mail, so this data does not reflect messages that have been archived. Well, okay, so but it's. Can you search it, for something, you know, that other than, I mean, it has, does it have to just be in a folder or in the inbox if you want to have easy access? Yeah, so. Uh, so 
um, our, our notion of archive is not the same as Gmail's notion of archive. So um, for the purposes of this data, m messages either are in the inbox or in a folder, and it's all, all of this is searchable via the, uh, via the search mechanism that I showed. Right, so our notion, the question was about archive. Our notion of archive is, is really, uh, I get, I'm, I'm not an Outlook user, but it, it's really kind of offsite, you know, preserved, but, and it takes an extra step to get access to it, right. So this is, I think of your working mail, your working email store, okay. So uh, anyone care to guess where the, where, how the shape of this data looks like? Where are most of the, you think it's high on the zero percent and goes down? Any other guesses? The other way, you think it's low on the zero percent? Okay, so this was surprising to us. The biggest amount of, uh, the, the largest hump is in the zero to five percent, so they're not foldering at all. But the second largest is that almost everything is being foldered. And if anything, the data is skewed towards having more messages foldered. And it's, uh, it's quite, you know, there's quite a spread of foldering, amount of foldering activity. So again, uh, for our data population, which is an enterprise email population, there's, a, there's uh, um, data that shows that there's a lot of foldering still going on. And people will mention, at least at IBM, that one of the reasons why they don't use Gmail is that they don't offer folders, and it sort of breaks an email habit that they have. Question? Just, uh, I don't know if you dug down one level on the data, like how much of the email, like the ones that didn't fold at all, how much of the email was read? Coming up, coming up. Uh, we'll, answer that. Uh, well, partially answer that question in a little bit. Okay, so um, I think an interesting data point in terms of how do we design email clients that um, accommodate users' desire to folder, and what are they trying to do when they folder anyways? What, you know, is it just get it out of sight or, or what? Okay, another question was, how are people using relatively recently introduced features in email? So uh, the Whitaker and Seidner work uh, initially mentioned that you should have a flagging mechanism that says, I want to follow up on this message in the future, but I want to leave it in my inbox. Um, so from our data, almost half people use flagging at all uh, in, in notes. So this is, this is data that reflects the usage in notes or blue mail in any client that they have. On average, those people who use flagging have 17 messages flagged, um, but the median is four, so that suggests that it's skewed by a lot of high flagging users. Okay, so the, message, the question about unread. Uh, on average, about a quarter of people's inbox messages are not read, or, or sorry, are marked as unread. But I think this is an artifact of a recent mechanism of manually marking messages as unread as another flagging mechanism. Um, and so uh, we did a, some, uh, a histogram about how much of your email in your inbox is unread. Anyone care to guess what the shape of this graph looks like? People who marked it as unread explicitly? No, okay. no, uh, so we're only, we can only log the unread state of a message, and we can't tell whether it was manually or unread. Cool. Anyone care to, sh to guess on what the shape of this state of this? And it's not bimodal. It's mostly uh, zero to five percent, which I think are people who are not manipulating unread. But there are some people, and we want to dig into this further. I mean, is it because they're keeping their inbox so small that if they get one unread message, it's 95 or 100 percent unread? Or is it because they're using it as a to-do list and they're using unread as a manual flag? Um, so uh, uh, this is actually data that we've just been collecting. So some of the digger, the deeper digging we like to do, and I can hear gears turning, we haven't done yet, but this is as far as we've gotten. Is the question? No, I was just going to say, uh, the 7,000 users, any of them in operations? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, all these not, you, get, you get tons of notifications, they don't even bother looking. I see, I see. Are, are, are there other reasons why the, they're artificially high? So I don't know that answer. I don't know precisely of the 7,000 users what job roles they are, but we could, um, we could tr kind of reverse engineer and trace back for that information. Uh, yes, question. Is this 
100 data taken after a user session or just kind of a snapshot? It's a snapshot. It, the, it, this is a snapshot of unreadness. At, we, do, uh, a, a sna we do several snapshots a day. We average that to one figure per day. And then we average those to one figure per person. And then we collect it over the data set. OK. Um, so focusing on what I'm going to call active blue mail users, those that use blue mail more than twice, um, that's a smaller set of num users. And we did a survey, why aren't you using blue mail or why did you stop using blue mail? And they're for mainly practical reasons, it's slow performance. You guys got a perfect view of slow performance. Um, it requires an internet, intranet login uh, still with an IBM. And as people mentioned there are limited times they use blue mail, like if they're working from home or if they're traveling or if they're working at another site or a customer site. And that just doesn't happen every day. So they don't use blue mail all the time. But for the people that do use blue mail, most people like threading. Almost 90, over 90% 90 of the people use the default threaded mode all the time. They never went into non-threaded mode, which could be confirmation for not offering that feature. But 8% uh, do use non-threaded at least once, perhaps to find specific messages um, to, to tag. And a fraction, less than 1%, you work largely in unthreaded mode. Um, and so that, that feature is available for them that want to use it. We also did a, uh, fa uh, a number that we've been calling inbox compression. So if you take all your messages and you show them one at a time, and you take that, all the in message in your inbox and show it threaded, how much smaller is that? What's the amount of compression that threading is giving? And, and in our data, it's 14%, which I actually was surprised seems low in terms of what uh, what my experience is of threading makes it much easier to deal with uh, uh, my inbox. But the numbers say it's only about 14%. Um, and each entry represents a little over than one message. It could be the characteristic of, of you know, notifications or certain kinds of messages we're getting. But that's what the data say. And, and, and yet people like threading, obviously, uh, almost universally. Tagging, on the other hand, uh, out of the 1,822 active blue mail users, about 10% use tagging at all, and much less, about 1% use tagging somewhat persistently more than twice. Um, so uh, one of the things it says that at least foldering is important for our users. The other thing I think it says is that we haven't highlighted tagging or kind of promoted tagging enough. So I had to point out that in, in this case of blue mail, you know, people are just downloading it and trying it, and we're not doing a personal demo where we're not actually, we're, we're seeding their inbox with a message that is tagged and explains how to use tagging. But uh, I think we could be doing more in the interface itself to highlight tagging in email. Um, so this is an area for future work. And could, again, be a confirmation for, you know, if you wanted to really uh, promote tagging, maybe you shouldn't offer foldering if you want to kind of change people's conceptual model off of that. Yeah, no, so it's actually, yeah, the two or more days, uh, what does that mean? It's actually, it's, um, it's actually not a very favorable statistic for us. What it is is a count of tags and seeing that that count increments over two successive blue mail uses. Um, so does the count of, does the count of tags on day one, uh, is it less than the count the next time I use blue mail, in other words, that the user has personally applied tags. What is successful? Uh, in other words, by uh, session one and three, that wouldn't, well, I guess session three would still be more than session two. If, uh, right, right, right. So, it, right, if, if I use blue mail for five days and the only change in tagging is between the first day and the fifth day, we're only counting one instance of increased tagging. Um, so, we're, this is, this is not a favorable statistic to us, but we wanted some sense of people actively applying tags. And the other actually thing, the reason why this data is, I think, low is that conceivably you could delete a message that had tags on it and replace it with exactly the same number of tags and we wouldn't notice a change. Um, but it's a little, I think it's, I think it's relatively accurate in that people are not using tagging as much as we would wish or had hoped. But also, I have to point out, you know, tagging is a new feature for our user population. So even three months is not necessarily uh, enough of a time to get over a learning curve of using tagging. Yes? One place I can tag can be used to proselytize is people who um, subscribe to the GTD getting things done. Is that not running for IBM? It's subscribe to? 
Oh, it's not right, right. Uh, right. So the question is whether tagging would help a, a particular. Well, it's, it's evangelized within various forums and stuff as a way of managing your email. And so I would expect people who were advocates of that to be going, oh, wow, now I have a mail system allowed me to do these um, transient tags. And 20 doesn't seem to me to be enough to imply that there are very many of those people around. Right. So um, I, I can't comment about whether. Uh, I can't. Con I just don't have a sense of how popular those email triaging kind of techniques are at IBM. And certainly, I've heard of people ask that, or and I actually have heard someone say, "Oh, Blue Mail's great for helping me do this," but I don't have any sense of how widespread that is at IBM. So I, I don't know the answer to that question. Okay, there's no clock in this room. Um, so finishing up, easing email pain, uh, we. Tried to help deal with email volume, largely through threading, which I think helps manage the volume of email coming in, and uh, dealing with finding messages. So the way that we're doing threading and foldering ends up softening the folder boundaries. So it's no longer the case that you put it in a folder, it's out of sight, and you can't easily get it. You know, Because we're threading across folders, you can actually quickly get access to the messages, even if you put it somewhere else. So that's actually lowers the barrier for putting things into folders if, if you feel like it's, not, it's harder to get to. Um, and we're also using threading to leverage any indexing that you do, so either foldering or tagging. So you might realize that uh, by, by keeping messages together in threads, it helps you actually suggest where you could th folder things, because all these other messages you foldered in a folder. And similarly, tags get inherited across a thread. And so you only have to tag one message, and that index can um, kind of help you get at a whole collection of messages in the thread. Um, and so far, we're exploring tagging as a complementary indexing mechanism to foldering. Um, but as I said, it's been slow in uptake in, in this particular study, given the design that we have. Uh, we can continue to iteratively refine the design work in Blue Mail, um, enhancing tagging. One of the areas in particular we want to look at tagging is right now, uh, if I didn't explain this, tagging is simply your own personal indexing. In other words, you only see tags that you apply. And that means that it's not socially viral, which is one of the nice features of tagging. And so we've been thinking about is there a way in which we could make tagging socially viral, that is other people, and it's weird because email is a semi-private resource, right? But nonetheless, you do share messages with other people, and can we think about sharing tagging across people that have received that message? Uh, so we're looking into ways of doing that. Um, we're gonna continue to study how Blue Mail is used. We're continuing to collect a use data, and we are scheduling a round of interviews with interactively. So the usage data tells us what people are doing. The interviews often tell us why or why not or some of their reactions. Um, and some of our, our research has identified some new areas of email pain. Not that we've solved the old ones already, but um, mobile use access to email, the notion that people are accessing email from an ecology of devices, how should that be reflected in the design of an email client, and worldwide access. So um, in our case, we discovered some people um, preferred using Blue Mail because it helped deal with some constraints in certain parts of the world. So although everyone in a global company is expected to you know, process email and respond in a very timely way, it's not the case that everyone in the world has equal access to email, at least in some global companies. So some people in certain developing re regions may not have as high of a network bandwidth connection, or they may not have the same uh, computer platform, or they may even have smaller uh, email retention policies. And um, it creates unequal access to email in ways that show up in terms of, well, how can we really support email practice or design a client that supports that? Um, and so that's one of the possible areas that we are exploring for future work in the Blue Mail work. Blue Mail, by being web-based, of course, allows you to um, more easily translate to a mobile platform and also more easily translate to regions in the world which may not have typical kind of IT or, or constrained IT resource, resource provisioning. 
Uh, just a quick overview of members of our team, um, developers that are, as I mentioned, located in Argentina, as well as in the East Coast, and some other folks that are involved in design and study, and a list of papers that have been published on Blue Mail, the extended abstracts, which Irene Al saw and I think uh, led to this visit, uh, that's available on the ACM Digital Library and some other works, uh, and an email address to contact me if you have any more questions, especially people who might be watching this in a time delay. So thanks for inviting me and for the questions, and um, happy to entertain further questions. Um, of the 20 people that use tagged actively, do you, know, do you have any idea of how many folders they use as well? Were they doing a good job of using them in tandem, or were they really just using one or the other? So all the people that did use tag, the question was the people who use tags, were they also using folders? And it's, it's the case None of the people that were using tags were in the no filer category. And most of them had a lot of foldered mail. So, but the question still is, uh, that makes sense at the level that people who do tags, it makes sense that people that have a lot of folders, that is they are in a personal habit of indexing mail, would also do tagging. And people that don't have any folders would, would not necessarily even bother tagging as well. They're just going to rely on search. Um, so we saw, of those people, we saw a mixture of people that were, some people basically said over time they expect to only use tags and not folders. Other people said those stories about, you know, folders are the large containers, tags are the smaller containers, or tags I would use to connect across folders. Yes, question? Um, I'm still kind of stuck on that average size of the threads being so small. One point, yes. Was, was there a really high standard deviation on that? Do you, do you know offhand? Uh, was the standard deviation for threads high? Because that seems surprisingly small. Um, I don't know offhand. Uh, that, is, that is an area that we want to explore further. Um, I'm pretty confident that the number is correct. I mean, we are certainly debugging our usage statistics. So I think it's correct, but it may be, it may be low for um, other reasons like we have a statistic about what percentage of your email store is singleton messages. Um, and I want to understand whether that's sort of overwhelming the, the over statistic. So I, I think you're right. I don't think it's a normal distribution. I, I can't off the top of my head describe it better at the moment, but that's certainly something we want to explore. Yes? Is there any feedback on the orienteering? Mm. Yes. Um, so that ability to kind of scroll ahead to people, it's one of the uh, one of the often mentioned favorite features of Blue Mail. And uh, if we're lucky, it may be one of the features that gets technology transferred into the product sooner rather than later. Um, because people have uh, appreciated being able to find um, a message through orienteering as well as as well as search. So it's a complementary affordance, and people, it's popular among our users. Do you, do you have sorting as well? Yes. Okay. We do, yeah. And when you sort by name, and you're worried, you're sorting, right. Is that by name? Okay, so uh, I'll see if I'll try this. Sorting by name automatically puts you in non threaded mode, because if you sort by name in threaded mode, you don't get what you expect, I think. Um, so this is sorted huh, alphabetically, including punctuation marks, apparently. <laughs> but uh, it's sorted individually by name. Uh, whereas if you do, let's see if this happens. Huh, and when you go back into time, it doesn't put you back in threaded mode. But I think it should. Uh, but, but it's a default that threads out. This, this may not be related, but uh, the Slowdowns you're seeing, what percent can you ascribe to just what must be a lot of JavaScript coming down versus the server side? OK, so where is the slowness in the performance? Um, I actually, first of all, I want to repeat this a, a proof of concept prototype not optimized for performance. I think it's mainly actually that. It is using Dojo and some amount of Ajax and JavaScript. Um, and I actually think the, what you're experiencing may be the layers of networking between here and the IBM firewall. So it's not as slow for me uh, in everyday use, even when I'm working from home, 
although I'm not sure I can explain exactly why that is. So it, it's, it's a combination of networking and some heavyweight uh, you know, browser coding and that the code is not optimized for that, to, to be sure. What are some of the other loved and hated features? Um, let me just think a little bit about that. So I think what gets mentioned most is uh, threading, frankly, uh, because the threading in the current, uh, um, the current client that most people use doesn't ha didn't have threading until recently, and its implementation of threading, I think, is not the best. Um, the other thing, actually, is search. Um, we do uh, we have a fundamentally different search approach than our normal clients, and it um, it's kind of interesting. Blue mail search focuses on the header information, the sender and the subject, and does not do a full text search. Our the notes client actually does a full text search, and I think because of that, it returns things that are more surprising, not what the user expected. So, in a sense, even though we're doing a less powerful search, our users actually appreciate it as being more what they want. Um, and then I think the orientation scroll bar is another. Uh, if, and I'll just say another point about search. Um, the way we're doing search actually takes advantage of the fact that in um, notes, this is actually all a relational database store. So it's cheaper to search just the headers than the whole full text. And there's, so it ends up being faster, more what the users expect, and um, more efficient in terms of network traffic. Uh, th then the, I would say the scrolling, uh, the orienteering preview is another favorite feature. Uh, okay, so the least favorite features are those things that I mentioned about why they're not using it, uh, performance. Um, and the other thing is a policy decision. So right now you have to be within the IBM intranet. You can't just go to any uh, net internet kiosk and access Blue Mail. So that actually we're hoping to change, it's not a technical limitation. Um, I'm trying to think down my uh, uh, other list. Can you show us under the actions? Uh, sure, nothing too exciting. Uh, just some individual housekeeping. Mark us on red. This is uh, show only on red is a filtering mechanism. Um, using a conversation viewer, it shows you what kind of uh, that, that is to do with how message threads appear, whether they appear with the embedded uh, replies collapsed or not. Um, there's nothing really exciting elsewhere. There's creating new folders and, and kind of email features. Question, yes. yes. Okay, so the question was, why not present a hierarchical tree view of threads? Is, is that, right. So in fact, um, <laughs> IBM did a very, uh, uh, elaborate <laughs> experiment with visualizing threads. So you may be familiar with the remail work. Uh, it was work that was done in, in Cambridge, and it had a very elaborate visualizing that showed the hierarchy of threads. And um, it, it's a deliberate choice. Basically, we felt that the most important aspect of threading is simply its chronological, reverse chronological order, and that the complexity that the threading viewer added wasn't our users weren't appreciating that. So it was a simplifying choice to just rely on chronology. So the question was about long threads. And one of the ways we're thinking about dealing with that is allowing people to break threads. Um, and also, our threading mechanism, it's not simply reply chain. We do some metrics about, uh, is the list of people the same? Uh, did something change? And so we are doing some automatic separating of threads. It's not strictly the reply chain. So we're, we're, we're kind of breaking some of those into different threads. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for coming and thank John. And I think you can stay around for I can, sure. To, to take further questions. So thank Great. You Thanks for having me.